Hi and welcome to another episode of Straight Out of Camera, proudly sponsored by Fujifilm South Africa. Joining me live in studio today is Managing Director of TechSmart.co.za, Mike Hubert, and from Cape Town commercial photographer, Leon Westhazen. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hey, hey. Good. So today is episode 12, and the genre we'll be discussing today forms part of commercial photography, and it is shooting corporate events. This sort of photography is not the type where you typically follow your friend that plays in a band and you go and shoot the event. We're talking about big corporate customers. We are talking about clients like Investec, Alan Gray, and FMB. Now, Second to commercial photography, to, to wedding photography, this is probably the second most lucrative sort of industry to work in. And I think it's quite difficult to get into this specific market. What do you think, Leon? Uh, yes, Isley, that, that is definitely a, a very tricky one to get into because um, the, the, the bigger players in terms of your client base, like you, like you said, your Investex and, and the bigger corporates out there, they – Number one, they go with who they know and a trusted voice. So once you're in, you're in. Um, and the people talk amongst themselves and you get booked up until capacity. So uh, it's, it's, you've, got to, you've got to deliver a consistent product and they, they have to know what they get and how quickly they get it. Because normally it's not about just quality. It's about uh, turnaround time at that high quality as well. And that's where it differentiates between nursing a photograph out of high ISO and badly exposed stuff from some like entry level band photography type uh, event photography to something that's really like, full on commercial it that is that is your revenue stream uh, there's there's a there's a, a big chasm between the two as you can expect with with most other genres in photography but the the high end corporate function photography is not something that's often discussed Leon, with regards to high end corporate customers, I know that you have done some work with Mercedes. Um, what are the ways that you would approach that pitch when when you going to see them to to do that type of shoots? Usually, uh, the the most important thing when you when you do a pitch is um, well, I think it also depends on where that client is and what it is that they need. But you have to identify that before you go in for the pitch, um, and and. You need to figure out whether or not they need your services at all, um, and if not, inv- invent a reason why they might want to dabble <laughs> with you <laughs> as their photographer. Um, and and for the first round, maybe offer to do a small event um, at a reduced fee so that they can actually see what kind of what kind of impact you have. It's not yeah. just coming with a, a compact camera and snapping away and doing groups of like four, four smiling people in front of a camera. There's there's a lot more to it. Um, as as much as uh, the elaborate end of it of having maybe a set designed um, to have some photographs done, uh, I don't know if you've seen the um, the recent awards. Was it from the, uh, the Emmy uh, Grammy Grammy Awards Emmy Awards, uh, where where we saw a, a major set a cast of amazing portraits because it's all people that came for the uh, for the. Uh, awards and they were all nominees and then uh, they had opportunity to be shot by an internationally famous photographer all in a beautiful setting it looks like it was all done in an elaborate vogue uh, campaign or something like that they're all dressed up and it looks amazing so you get the lighting you get the location right and then you have something to show your clients something like that then they see the difference between happy snapping with on-camera flash and something Mm -hmm. that's professionally done like a like a full-on shoot except it works out like a uh, it's commercial function photography, next level. Mike, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Tim Woolman in the studio, and he was chatting about how important technology is with regards to camera gear in, in commercial photography, especially when he was shooting the 94.7 um, bicycle race. Mm-hmm. He was able to, to submit images to the social media group that ran that campaign within seconds due to, to that form of technology now available in cameras. Yeah, it's it's obviously the Wi-Fi connectivity makes it very easy to share directly from your camera um, if you're good enough to actually take pictures um, straight from camera. Uh, the other thing, of course, is uh, your editing skills. Mm. I think Leon will testify to the fact that you have to be quick and have to have a workflow going. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Mark. Um, your workflow is, is essential. And um, one of the things that we did at Mercedes, we did a... Uh, a live uh, teaching event as part of part of the Boca Fashion Film Festival, 
um, where Isia van Sal and myself, he, d- he did the makeup and explained how he does that. And then I spoke about how, how you go about lighting a fashion portrait. Um, and that was all done live. Uh, yep. So people could actually see how I build the light and what kind of changes I make and how that reflects in the images, um, yeah. purely because I had the um, HDMI cable connected to a 4K uh, display so that people can actually see what I see in camera. Wow. Um, th- that had a completely different angle on what that meant for photography and how people can number one see the process number two see the quality of of a camera like the Mm -hmm. the the fujifilm gfx um and also what that does for mercedes brand because you see that that quality instantly and people make a subconscious connection between the space that they sit in in that amazing showroom where you have amgs parked all around you um and and the quality of the image and all of a sudden people start to understand what the quality means and and how the how the brand benefits from all of that in the end Mike, international photographers that stand out in the genre? Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to identify those because it's not typically the work that you would uh, exhibit on on Instagram. But I think if you are talking about uh, doing corporate type of photography, if you've been asked to capture the royal family, I think you've, your head is your head is through. It's it's you have to have a couple of yeah. really decent portfolios behind your uh, name. I think if you think of the work of Annie Lebovitz, she's been recently asked to do, uh, to do official portraits uh, of the Queen on the celebration of her 90th birthday. She was the first American ever to be officially uh, to officially capture the Queen and her family, of course. And I must say, some of these photos just looks absolutely stunning. It's done in that typical Lebovitz fashion, and it's just amazing. Um, for those who are not familiar with her work, I think she's essential being for any photographer, from her early uh, assignments for Rolling Stone magazine through to the work that she's doing now for Vanity Fair. She's, uh, she's gorgeous. She's amazing. I think she's a top photographer. Follow us on SOC underscore live on both Facebook as well as Instagram, where we will have examples of Annie's work. Natalie Bukri is a professional portrait and corporate event photographer. She was born in Mannheim, Germany, to a French father and a German mother, and grew up with a strong influence of her father's passion for photography. Natalie studied tourism and began her working career in Munich, then followed her interest of the African bush by taking up a position by leading mobile safaris in Botswana. In 2002, she moved to Johannesburg to focus on her passion for photography and has worked as a full-time professional photographer since 2006. She says, photography has always been a part of my life and is an extension of myself. I make a point of setting projects and taking photographs in my spare time. It is therapeutic to get lost in my own world and forget about everything around me. Here to chat about corporate photography, Natalie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Coming from safaris in Botswana to doing corporate events, that's a little bit of a jump, isn't it? A little bit, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, it's been a road that um, I didn't expect, that I didn't plan, and it just happened. And I got the opportunity um, after working in tourism for a number of years um, because photography has always been part of my life. So I've always had photographs and um, someone saw um, some of my work and asked me if I didn't want to take some photographs for a company. And at that point in my career in tourism, I was unhappy in my job. So I just took that chance. And that was the beginning of everything for me. Natalie, your work is uh, really nicely polished. I had a look at your, your website and it's a, it's a good variety of techniques and everything else, even though you, you uh, put yourself out there as an event photographer. So um, if, if you had to explain how you differentiate yourself from the typical uh, event photographers, how do, you, how do you explain that to your clients? When I speak to potential clients, my biggest angle is probably my workflow and uh, my approach to um, everything that comes with um, corporate events, because I have been in the industry for over 11 years, actually. Sure. Um, I have developed a workflow because I understand that corporates don't have time. They don't have time to sit with you and explain in great detail what it is that they need. And they also don't have time after the event to look at your photographs and to decide which photographs they actually want to use and which ones they don't. So I've taken that on and I 
I have a proper workflow that I present. And first of all, my turnaround time is really quick. I, I have all my images at the client 24 hours after the event's done. Sure. That's good. Um, that is a big selling point. Um, and I can also shoot real time if um, corporates need that. So that's been taken on a couple of times as well. And then I also make sure that my images are ready to use. So the first of all, the selection is good. I don't have 20 of very similar images um, of different situations. If I have a speaker, then I choose maybe three images at most. Um, and so I go through all the different situations in, um, that, that you have in an event. And I make sure that the images the, the, the company gets, they can immediately use their different sizes mm. and different... Um, so I make sure that I edit my images with, with the end result in mind, mm -hmm. where the images need to go. Perfect. So, so you, you um, play the role, not just of the photographer, but also as the first round of culling and, and basically an editor. You make some decisions for your client and they trust you with that. Definitely. I feel it takes out a little bit of the, the angst of the, the events team um, that you have at um, the corporate company because they already, after the event's finished, they're already busy planning the next event and um, they don't have time to, and, and also they don't have the, the computers that can open big files and everything. So I always give low resolution images they can browse through and... Yeah, and, and they don't need to worry about what images they need to choose. They can just go with what I give them. Brilliant. Natalie, when we still publish the magazine and shoot covers, it usually helped a lot when the photographer doing the cover uh, chose a couple of images uh, afterwards and came with the selection to you and said, listen, I believe these ones work best. Um, and I think it, it's perhaps what you also saying about you taking that... Uh, creative approach and saying these are the ones that from my side is best just use these do you do the tr clients trust you enough and just put that in your hands yes i i do get that um attitude uh, because um the people say i'm the photographer i have the eye i mm. spend the time with the images and i also, when I work with different clients, I make the time to really understand who that client is and what they do um, mm. to really deliver the kind of images that reflect their brand um, because it is the most important thing. Um, there's nothing worse than a misplaced image uh, for a brand, I think, or a, or a badly taken photograph. And so I think I do understand, especially because most of the companies I've worked for quite a number of years, so I really do understand what's most important to them. And so once I've taken the images, I look at what represents most of what they were trying to achieve. What's the toughest corporate job you ever have to do? Um, I've done a recent event um, over a couple of days where I needed to follow... Um, an international CEO who came to um, visit the South African uh, branch and I needed to follow him for two days at different functions that he was attending and I needed to be there and cover everything that he was doing um, at the same time I was supposed to like blend in and not be visible at all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which yeah was quite tough um, because you need to you need to just be aware of yourself all the time and at the same time be in the moment, um, not really knowing what comes next, even though you kind of have a brief, but it's it's just a guideline and you need to be flexible. So yeah, I think it's most important that you that you understand yourself and that you have this camera that makes you stick out and try and make sure that you <laughs> what, what do you mean stick out? Um, well, that you, when you have a camera pointed at someone's um, face, you don't really blend in. You definitely get noticed by the person that you're photographing. Okay. So that's a, that's a good point, Natalie. Um, uh, on on cameras, uh, if you don't mind sharing, what it is that you use for most of your event photography um, as as a live 
uh, operation, uh, especially that when you when you try to not be as noticed, do you still opt for sort of like your large zoom lenses, or do you try and be more discreet, almost like more street documentary kind of a style? How do you how do you operate when when you 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 know your clients have expectations, but they say um, you've got free reign? It depends. Um, when I can, I do um, work with a zoom lens just because it gives me a little bit more flexibility. Um, so I do work with a with a sixteen to fifty five millimeter. Um, but if I if I have to, and even um, more so if it's a low light or darker situations, then I do opt for a for a fixed lens, the sixteen mil or the um, or the thirty five. So it it depends. I can't say that there's one lens that I always shoot with. Uh, Natalie, and also just to be clear, when you when you move around shooting either with your sixteen fifty five or your primes, um, do you, do you try and concentrate mostly on uh, natural or available light, or do you use flash often? I use flash very often. I don't ever leave the house without it. I um, need to make sure that um, I'm. I, I can't expect natural light to be there. Mm. Um, it hardly ever is. So um, I work a lot with with my flash. Natalie, take us on the journey when you started 11 years ago doing these corporate events. Um, how did you approach your clients? How did they find out about you? You know, t- if you could take us on that journey, because obviously, um, as Leon said, it's a very close group once you're in, and you probably get more referrals than what you would be a photographer that's just pitching on a job. Okay, so when I first started... I um I I was very hungry for for the work and I just threw myself out there. I sat on the phone and I phoned through the top 500 companies um and just and just told everyone that you know they need to hire me because <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who's going <laughs> to do the best work. And and it is it is true some of the some of the companies that I um, started doing work for then I still do work for today um, and you need to you need to stay on top of that you need to keep in contact because even if the marketing person who works in that position changes that usually means that their friend, yeah. Their, their friend gets <laughs> chosen yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it definitely is like that Natalie, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, talking about that you have to kind of keep something on the side for yourself because corporate event photography can be draining. It can kind of suck that creative spirit out of you. Um, do you find the same? Absolutely. I um, I don't think it matters what kind of photography do you, you do for your work. Um, I think that the moment someone tells you what you need, what it is that you need to photograph, it it takes away a little bit of mm. that that special thing that makes photography um, personal for everyone. So, um, and I've also been in a situation where I just looked at it as a job. And um, since then, I've decided that every year I need to work on on one particular personal project of mine that I follow during my spare time to make sure that that I keep that passion going because I just need to have that. I remember you said you came to us um, one day and you spoke about your personal project. You were working with your husband um, regarding a fixed lens camera and that you were basically going on holiday and shooting a whole lot of different sort of scenes, but on a 23 mil focal length. Um, can you maybe share a little bit about that? You're talking about the X100S. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, it's the, the first camera that I, that I had in the Fuji range and I did um, get it particular to to um, work with my personal projects and um, because you can take it everywhere it has been on me ever since um, it fits in my normal handbag so I really take it with me all the time and it started when we first when we first got that um, camera we went on a family holiday to Namibia and whoever's into photography knows that when you go to Namibia you have amazing landscapes and you have lots of photo opportunity and that comes with 
uh, traditionally a lot of gear that you need to pack. And we decided, because we were traveling with lots of family, to keep the gear to a minimum and just go with our X100 Aces. And the day that we visited Zoss's Flay was a really um, a remarkable one because it was so easy to walk up and down the dunes with just this one little camera. And the images, I still really enjoy the images that we got from today. Uh, there, there are some images you can't get when you're working with one focal length, but you know that going into a certain scene and then you just work with what you have. And it also teaches you to really work with your gear. Hmm. So um, I absolutely hmm. love that. That that minimalist approach is actually something that a lot of people enjoy about the X100, but um, because it, it shoots much like the Rolleiflex film cameras where you didn't really have to change much. You have to work in the moment and use what's there and, and really be at the top of your game. And that's kind of the fun of photography for me. Um, and that doesn't, that doesn't matter which genre you're shooting in. Um, I want to ask a little bit like how, how event photography and your lifestyle portraiture and everything else, the way that you communicate with your clients, they, they look really comfortable and like they're trusting you in the image. Uh, there's this similarity um, in, in your style of event photography and what I see a lot of wedding photographers do. Um, is is there approach that, that you take from it or how do you how do you work with events, um, especially with posing people and getting them comfortable in, in front of the camera? Uh, for them to not just go for their default smile and off they go again. Uh, do you have a secret sauce or tell us a little bit more about your process? I don't know about a secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I think I look at each person as uh, the person behind whatever it is, that job that they're doing, um, because at the end of the day, we're all just human beings and most of us don't really enjoy being photographed. And... So I, I do think that I, I approach my events as if it was a wedding, as if it was a family function, because it's just a bunch of human beings that are stuck together in a room. Mm. And no matter what title you have, you are still aware of your camera and how you look and will that wrinkle show or <laughs> will she get my double chin? And that makes us self-conscious. And um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to be in tune with that. Um, and 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 try and speak to to the people. If it's in portraiture, I try to really make people comfortable um, by speaking to them. Um, and and in my event photography, I I look at it as if it was a wedding, as if it was somebody who because because people do put a lot of work into events to put them together, and they spend a lot of time a little on money on details so I do try and make a point of capturing that and it doesn't matter um, what company or event it is that I'm covering um, I've once heard um, a photographer say that you need to approach every event as if it was a royal wedding and <laughs> it's really it's really clicked something in me and I, I try and take that on whatever I photograph that no matter what it is that I get asked to cover. I I need to just really make it look its absolute best. Uh, Natalie, um, if you had to take somebody on your team um, and, and train them up uh, from scratch, what tips would you uh, possibly give them? Maybe your top three, uh, so that so that when you approach and step into the genre, if it's an unfamiliar territory, that people can start making better images um, in their event photography. The first thing I think is most important is that. Um, you have to really understand the company that you are photographing for. So you need to go and you need to check out the web. Um, you need to look at their website and um, see what kind of images that is that they are using, how important imagery is for them. And you also need to see who the people are, that you recognize faces when you walk into that company or when you're um, at the event that you can recognize important key players and that you can take photographs of them because even if nobody's really pointing out people, you need to know who is important and who needs to be covered with your photographs. Um, you also probably, something that I do, because it's available, you can 
read up on the actual different people. You find them on Facebook or on LinkedIn and different mm. places. And I try to understand these people a little bit more. So I do research. Um, not that I'm like a stalker, but I do. <laughs> try, I just try and understand um, what's important for the people and what kind of images they they like so that I can just jump into the situation a little bit quicker. And I so think it's research, it's research about the people, not about who to go and take your selfies with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I think that people are not doing that enough. Um, it, it is quite time consuming, but I find that um, that is the one thing that I do religiously and it really helps me to understand mm -hmm. um, the, the ethics of the company and that makes, makes a huge difference for me. And your, your last tip? The last tip that I um, would say is really important is that you really, really know your gear because event photography is very fast and people don't have time and there's no no excuses. You can't be trying to look for some button or some function. Um, also having to keep in mind that sometimes you are in an environment that's pretty dark. So if you don't know where the button is on your camera with the eyes closed, you're going to be slow and you're going to probably mm -hmm. miss that that shot. So you have to have to have to know your gear. I suppose also carrying that extra spare battery always. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, that is second nature to me. Yes, you need to have spare batteries, spare um, SD cards, and just be prepared because it's it's quite a high um, the you you take a lot of photographs um be it a speaker mm. or something you just you just do take a lot of images and so you need to be prepared and you you need to you need to be covered with extra batteries and SD cards definitely Natalie where can we find you on social media you can find me on social media either on facebook um at natalie bukri or you can find me on instagram at natalie bukri And your website? And I've got a website which is www.nataliebukri.com. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, I think that this is an incredible sort of genre and there's not enough people shooting this. Um, gentlemen, where can we find you on social media? Uh, Leon uh, Westeisen at uh, leonslens.com or Leon Westeisen Instagram and also leonslens.com on Facebook. Cool. You can just follow me at Fark1 on Instagram. That's is, it. Is there a special reason why it's called Fark1? Uh, well, because Fark was taken. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Thank you. <laughs> very, very interesting event happening on the 15th of July. It's called the Fuji Lounge. It will be hosted at Photo ZA Gallery that is in Rosebank. Um, there are limited spots available. Please go and check it out on Meetup. Um, and some of the genres and the discussions that will be held is an open Q&A about photography, a peer review, portfolio critique. Um, they'll be chatting about black and white prints. There will be a discussion on long exposure, family photos and holidays. And then specifically two um, events basically discussing and giving you feedback and interesting points on the XT2 and XT20. Now this will be hosted by Stanley Carl de Pont. He was one of our guests a couple of weeks ago and I do reckon that if you are a mirrorless lover Even if you've got a different camera, you need to come and just be a part of this. Um, this is where really the photographic community have to meet up and just enjoy each other's company. Just uh, just on that photo walk uh, connection, there, uh, there's also one happening down on the 15th of July down here in Cape Town. It's on a Saturday for the, the people who are down for the school holidays and all that. Please come and join us. So it'll be in the city and we're shooting at a 15th of a second and die rise that one. And hope to see you. Thanks for the chat, guys. It was brilliant. Thanks, Natalie. It was great being here. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. It's nice to chat to you again. Thank you.